In the second set of the notes for section 9.6, we will be focusing on some example problems that deal with the families that we just discussed. Let's talk about the alteration of our Pythagorean triples. Family members are created by altering the Pythagorean triple via multiplication or division. Let's be thinking about that in the following example problems. Notice here it says find the missing side of each of the following right triangles. We have to know that we're dealing with the right triangle in order to use a Pythagorean triple. And here I want us to be thinking about the numbers that we see. Now those are decimals, but if we move the decimal one place to the right, we've revealed 8 and 17. Those two numbers are part of the 8, 15, 17 family. What did we do to get 0 0.8? We took 8 and divided it by 10. What did we do to get 1.7? We took 17 and divided it by 10. So now our other number that's left a part of that family is 15. So we have to take 15 and do the same thing to that number, which is divide it by 10, to give us our final answer of 1.5. For number 2, it's very similar to the first one we looked at. So moving the decimal place 1 over to the right or multiplying it by 10, it reveals the numbers 40 and 41, which is part of the 9, 40, 41 family. So we divided each of those numbers by 10, in that family in order to get our answers. So we get the side lengths of the triangles by dividing each of those numbers by 10. Let's take a look at number 3. We have 7 radical 3, 24 radical 3. Hmm, do we see a family there? Well, 7, 24, we know we have a 7, 24, 25 triple. What do we do with those? We just put a radical 3 on the end. So our final answer is 25 radical 3. Let's take a look at number 4. For number 4, we have a mixed number there. And anytime we're working with halves, in this case here we have 7 and a half, I always encourage you to try multiplying it by 2 to get some whole numbers. So when we multiply the 4 by 2, we get 8. And we multiply the 7 and a half by 2, we get 15, which reveals our 8, 15, 17 family. What did we do to each of those members? We divided by 2. So then we have to take our remaining family member, which is 17, and divide it by 2 to leave us with 8.5 for our final answer. For number 5, we're working with some larger numbers, so I'd be thinking about division. In order to make those numbers smaller, we could divide each of them by 4. Doing so leaves us with 5 and 13. So we should be thinking about 5, 12, 13 family. What did we do to get to those numbers? Well, we multiplied each of those family members by 4. So we have to take our remaining family member, which is 12, and multiply it by 4 as well to leave us with 48. And for number 6, we could divide each of those numbers by 3, which reveals 21 and 29, which is part of the 20, 21, 29 family. So our remaining family member is 20. We multiply that by 3, which leaves us with 60. For the last three examples here, 7, 8, and 9, I would like you to try those on your own. Work out the problem similarly to what we did above, and then once you're ready to compare your answers with mine, you can hit play again. For number 7, we are working with an isosceles trapezoid, which means that when we create the two right triangles and a rectangle, we have leftover pieces that are the same on either side for the bases of the triangle. So each side of the base must be 12 if we take the 20 away from 44 and then divide by 2. And right away on the triangle on the left, you should be thinking 5, 12, 13. So our answer is 5. For number 8, since we're working with an isosceles triangle, because we're given the two legs congruent, we know that the altitude being drawn to the base also bisects the base because of congruent triangles. So that leaves us with 3.5, and, and now we have a right triangle we can work with with sides 3.5 and 12.5. And so if we multiply those by 2, it unveils a 7, 24, 25 family. And in order to get to that, we divided them by 2. So we have to take our remaining family member, which is 24, and divide it by 2 to get 12. And finally, for number 9, if we divide both of those numbers by 12, we're left with 3 and 4, which is a 3, 4, 5 triple. 
So we multiplied those by 12 to get the larger numbers. We have to take our remaining family number, which is 5, and multiply it by 12 to get 60. Please notice for the triples, the largest number is always the side across from the right angle. If that does not happen, you cannot use a Pythagorean triple.